The controllers we've designed up to this point have placed the poles of the system, the closed loop system, in order to achieve some desired transient response. We're going to look now at adding integral control. So we'll talk about the motivation for doing so, then describe how the controller is implemented, and conclude the video with an example. Here is our original system, and whenever we wanted to obtain a desired transient response we fed back the state variables through a gain matrix K and that gain matrix had the same number of gain values as there are state variables so we were able to place all of the system poles wherever we wanted. However we are left with steady state error. So here's an example of doing that we have a DC motor with a load, so here's a state space representation for it. There, the load has damping, but there's no stiffness, no spring resisting the motion. So here's A, B, C, and then the D matrix is zero. And if we use a gain matrix K in the configuration from the previous slide here, with values 30.9 and 611, then we end up with a 0.55 second settling time and 25% overshoot. Here's the output, step output for the motor shaft position, and here's the output for motor shaft angular velocity. So you can see that the settling time is 0.55 seconds, and we have a 20% overshoot. But you can also see that the steady state error to this unit step response is 0.9984 for the position. So we have 0 0.0016 for the steady state position. So we're going to add integral control to our toolbox. And this will allow us to remove steady state error. We're going to do this by adding output feedback. So we will take the output and feed it back the difference between that and our input R or our signal R is an error and we'll add an integrator to that error. So in the dashed line we have our system that we looked at before where we're placing the poles of the system. Now we have introduced a new state variable XN and this integrator has increased the system order. So we have one more pole to place whenever we add integral control. So let's look at an example of how this is done. But first let me talk about this new state variable. So you have x sub n, that's the output of the integrator. And that state variable is multiplied by this gain k sub e, which is the error gain. So now we have the gains k that match the order of the original system plus an additional gain, ke, which allows us to place this um, new pole that comes from adding the integrator. And so we'll see how to implement this, and then also, and then we'll look at an example. So here's the same figure as before, the block diagram for our system with integral control, and the state equations for this system. We have x dot equals bx, I'm sorry, ax plus b times u. And the differential equation for x sub n is xn dot is equal to e, which is negative c times y, I'm sorry, it's negative y plus r, but y is negative c times x. So y equals c times x, and xn dot is negative c times x plus r. Now we can combine these two equations and put them in matrix form. So we have this new state vector, which is our original state, state vector, plus this additional variable that we've added. And we have an, a new matrix A that multiplies the state vector. We have B times the input plus the zero vector times R. So the length of the zero vector is the same as the number of state variables in our original system. And we'll look at an example so that this will become clear. And Y is C times X bar plus zero times XN. We can note this value for u. It's negative k times x bar plus
plus ke times xn. And here that is in matrix form. So we have k times x bar, negative k times x bar, and then minus negative ke times xn. So we'll make this substitution into our state equation over here to get the state equation for this system. So now our state matrix is, is shown here. A minus BK is a submatrix. B times KE is another submatrix. So here's the matrix, the vector B, matrix B. So we'll have B times KE. So that's just a scalar multiple of B. Negative C and zero. So this is our new state matrix for the system shown in this diagram. And again, our state vector is the original x bar and an additional x sub n. Our input vector, our input matrix now is this zero vector and a one. And then our output matrix is the original C plus an additional zero. And the reason we have zero here is because the output still depends, it still has the same relationship to the original state variables x. So let's revisit that example where we had the DC motor and we wanted to control it to get 20% overshoot and 0.55 second settling time. Now we're going to add integral control so that we can eliminate the steady state error. Let's start by writing the state equation for this system. So here it is again, uh, written over again. And we'll go ahead and use the values that we have. A from the original state equation minus B times K. So that's this submatrix up here. A minus BK. And then we have B times KE. So there's B uh, times KE. Negative C and zero. So all of these values A, B, and C come from the original system state equation. We have the state variable feedback matrix K and our error feedback gain KE. And now we have our new state vector which is X1, X2, and X sub N. Then here's our new input matrix 0, 0, 1. And I didn't write the output equation. We're just going to use the state equation to find these gains because we're from the state equation is where we get the characteristic equation. Now going ahead and distributing all these terms, we end up with this for our new state matrix, 0, 1, 0. So this top left submatrix is A minus BK. So we have 0, 1, negative 5 twelfths K1, and negative sum of 5 thirds and 5 twelfths K2. So these four elements are A minus BK. And then here's B times KE, so 0 and 5 twelfths KE. And here's negative C, it's negative one and zero, and finally we have a zero there. So that new state matrix multiplied by our state vector plus the input, our new input matrix times our input R is our state equation. Now we're going to use this to place the poles of our system via the characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation is the determinant of SI minus the state matrix. So here again is the state matrix that we found here. Going ahead and computing the determinant, we get s cubed plus this term times s squared plus this term times s plus this term. And that's equal to zero. So there's our characteristic equation. And it's the same process whenever we were di designing controllers using pole placement without integral control. We're going to find our desired characteristic equation and then set the coefficients equal so that we can compute our gains. So our desired poles come from the second order approximation. We had a desired settling time percent overshoot, and those give us the damping ratio and natural frequency, which gives us two of our poles. So here they are. And then our third pole, since there are no zeros, open loop zeros in the system, we're just going to put our third pole at least five times as far from the real axis as our dominant second order pair. So we'll say our third pole is at negative 40. And these three poles give us the desired characteristic equation. Now we compare this with the characteristic equation for our integral controller system, which came from the previous slide and is repeated here. And that gives us 
the following values for gains. K1 is 2007, K2 is 126.9, and K sub E is 24,430. Now on this slide we've got the output of the integral controller. I only plotted two of the state variables, so this is x1 and x2. I didn't bother plotting x sub n. We have here the angular position of the motor shaft, so you can see the steady state value is 1, and we still have about 20% overshoot and a settling time of 0.55. So we got we maintained our transient response and we eliminated the steady state error. Remember here is the output from the original controller where we just placed two of the poles without integral control. So we had um, steady state error of 0.9986 for this system. So this is the step response with no integrator, and here's step response with our integral controller for the position and angular velocity. So we saw that whenever we placed the poles to get our desired transient response, we were left with some steady state error. That pole placement method came from feeding back the state variables. In order to get rid of the steady state error, we fed back now also the output of the system and we added an integrator to the resulting error. That integrator brought in an additional state variable, we called it x sub n, and x sub n is multiplied by a gain ke. So now we have an additional gain value to place the new pole that, come fr that came from our increased order of the system. And we looked at an example for DC motor with load, designing a controller both without and with integral control.